When I was in Gombe, particularly, I felt very, very close to a great spiritual power. If we think of the Bible, it would be in which we live and move and have our being. And I felt this, this spiritual power in every living thing. We call it our soul. Well, if we have a soul, then that spark of energy is in chimpanzees. They have souls, even though most people wouldn't talk about it that way. And the trees, they have a soul too. They've got a spark of that divine energy. in Gombe that I began to really think about the spiritual nature of, of life on this planet. When you're out in nature, if you're just completely calm, you know, I did, I was a bit scared when I met a leopard, I have to admit, but I, it didn't for a moment make me think, oh, I'm going to leave. No, because the leopard didn't do anything to me. I just felt nothing would happen to me because I was meant to be there. And I felt this about other times in my life. The most important part of being in the rainforest is the understanding of the interconnection, how every little species has a role to play. And I like to think of this tapestry of life in the forest. I think, okay, this little species disappears a thread is removed from the tapestry, and then this species goes, and another thread is removed. And if too many species go from this ecosystem, the whole ecosystem may collapse because the tapestry is in tatters, and we depend on healthy ecosystems. There's such magic out in the forest. And it, it just is a feeling of spirituality that this, you know, it's something so powerful and so much beyond what, what even the most scientific, brilliant brain could have created. This is my grandfather. I never met him, but he just looks wonderful. To me, he looks wonderful. I think it's very difficult to determine the different parts of who you are, where it came from. It's a mixture of genes and environment and experience, I think. So I was brought up in a very, very caring family. I had an amazing mother, supportive mother. And when I was very tiny, I loved animals. When I went to stay on a farm in the country, I was given the job of helping to collect the hen's eggs. Apparently, I began asking everyone, but where's the hole? Where does the egg come out of the hen? Because I couldn't see a hole like that. Well, nobody satisfied my curiosity. So I went into an empty hen house and waited. I waited at least four hours. I can still see the hen laying that egg. If I close my eyes, she's right there in front of me. And I don't know who was more excited, me or the hen. And <laughs> so, it's the making of a little scientist. Curiosity, asking questions, not getting the right answer, deciding to find out for yourself, making a mistake, not giving up and learning patience. It was all there in that little four and a half year old child. And a different kind of mother might have crushed that scientific curiosity. I might not have done what I've done. When I left the beloved forests of Gombe and the chimpanzees, because I realized that the forests were being destroyed and chimpanzee numbers were decreasing, I knew I had to do something. And somehow I was guided in a way to do what I did.
It's very important that young people learn that you can't just care for the environment. Uh, you need to care for people too, because you can't separate them. As I speak now, in different parts of the world, there are young people. They've rolled up their sleeves and they're out there clearing litter, planting trees, raising money for good causes, volunteering in shelters, volunteering in soup kitchens, changing the attitude of their parents. So Roots and Shoots is hope. Hundreds and thousands, millions of young people, the Roots and the Shoots, can break through and make a better world. And here is my studio, from where I reach out to the world. Well, for me, I have never been as busy in my whole life. You know, when I first was grounded, as I call it, I happened, luckily, to be at home in Bournemouth. And I was really frustrated, I was angry, because, you know, I was used to traveling 300 days a year around the world. And then I thought, well, there's no point being angry, I'm here, so we have to make the best of it. Since then, every single day, it's been Zooms and Skypes and podcasts and webinars and all these other things. I think the most important part about this is that I have been able to reach these millions more people in many more countries than I could possibly have reached if I was traveling. I just feel it was meant to be. You know, I just turned 87, so I'm now in my 88th year, so I don't know how much longer I have left. So it's good to be able to use these months when I'm still fighting fit, so to speak, um, to the best advantage I can. I'm not sure how my feeling of spirituality um, has guided my work, but it it's really more a feeling of this is what I'm meant to be doing. This is what I'm here for. Uh, my life has a meaning. I was a very shy child. All I wanted to do was go and live in the jungle and write books about animals. I didn't want anything else. I didn't even want to be a scientist. And then I had to give talks and things like that. But you know, especially now I'm here where I grew up with the family. I mean, I'm still the same Jane I was. And I don't understand what's happened to, why do people listen? Why do thousands of people come to lectures? I don't know. The world is so full of magic and surprises. And I think when people say, oh, science can describe it all. You know, you don't need to go to any intelligence behind the universe, science, we have all the answers. And after all, it's been proven that the universe began with the Big Bang. Well, yeah, I'm sure it did. But what created the Big Bang? You cannot say you, everything's explained because of the Big Bang. You've got to then say, now I want you to explain the Big Bang, and they can't. So I like to keep an open mind, and I, and I, like, I like to think of magic, and I don't want us to find out all the answers. You know, and I love that little phrase in the Bible, now we see through a glass darkly, then face to face. So one day we will learn the answers, but not on this planet. <laughs>